So far, we have given a general idea of how deep learning networks are used to solve several problems. We saw deep learning networks as huge functions with lots of parameters or variables. The data was always some matrix that could represent words or images, like this case. And then we had two different um, steps. The first one, we gave the data along with the correct solution to the network, and then we set the parameters of the model of the network. We trained them, we learned the parameters, and we used a function called loss function to see how well we were doing in each step. In the second phase, we tested our results. We took another separate part of the data not used during this training step and we evaluated how well we did with that and for that we did not give the answers to the deep learning network. Now we are going to see what problems are solved using deep learning with some very very practical examples. Let's begin with the problem of semantic segmentation. Here, in this slide, you have several of the problems that can be solved. The problem before was called image classification. We have several images, and for each image, we classify it into one class. In this problem, we said that we could have either sick, dead, or healthy trees. So for each image, for each piece of data, I had to assign one label among the different labels possible. That's called classification okay, of images. And we will be using this problem for many of our examples in these videos. But let's see some other possibilities. For example, sometimes I want to know exactly what every pixel in the image represents. For example, in this ex case, I have a tree, a plant of types Terocaria riofolia, and I assigned and I paint red every pixel that corresponds to that plant. I also have some other parts of the image that represent bushes, so I paint those green and give a class to them, the bush class to them, and then I have soil too. So in this case, I classify, if you want, every pixel in the image, and I paint pixels in the images in all, in every image that I have, according to all different classes. In classification, I have one label per image. In semantic segmentation, I assigned meaning, I assigned a class to every pixel on each of my images. And we can, for example, okay, not this yet, see that this problem of semantic segmentation is used, for example, as product mode is showing us from the Canvid data set is used in uh, self-driving vehicles. For example, this is, uh, represents an image uh, taken from a sensor in a self-driving car that's trying to identify the different things that the car can perceive in, the, in its surroundings. For example, other vehicles, the road, the sidewalk, the people, and so on and so forth. So in semantic segmentation, I have these kind of applications. In classification, I can have, uh, like I saw before, this assigning different images to uh, assigning different labels to each of my images. And for example, this is used to uh, recognize faces. When we see in some movie some very uh, advanced face recognition software that's able to pick up someone, uh, pick out, may, find someone in a crowd, then uh, that software is probably first using localization. So it's, or object detection, probably it's detecting the faces in the crowd. This is another uh, deep learning problem where we detect different objects in a uh, picture and then we can classify them. So for example in this image, in this example of face recognition we would have a big huge crowd and our uh, movie-like um, 
fate recognition software probably it's a uh, 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 an evil AI and there are lots of those in in movies probably the evil AI can automatically detect all the faces of everyone in the crowd and uh, classify them very fast and identify for each of the faces that it has detected what class what person in that case every class has only one uh, example what person belongs that the face belongs to okay that would be classification and localization or object detection and then classification there are many different deep learning problems that can be solved and many of them already have many many practical applications and i'm going to keep showing some examples now just let me say that the thing in the movies doesn't really work if it was so easy we would all be out of a job and although that's technically possible there are many many things that can go wrong with that very pretty and nice movie sequence and usually it's not easy to uh, recognize people in crowds that that easily although um, image classification can be used for that purpose so more examples of things that we are doing with uh, deep learning networks for example in this case we had some mosaics and we wanted to know what classes what tree species happened at every possible place in our mosaics and what we did was basically have someone annotate manually every species of trees visible in these super large mosaics and we used a semantic segmentation approach to assign to each pixel the three species that it belonged to semantic segmentation using deep learning used to create a census of three species for example we have already seen this one where we used image classification using semantic segmentation to find or to classify different patches that we had different images of trees into the sick dead and healthy and at some point we also used another not for deciduous tree category so for example before was semantic segmentation this is image classification and sometimes i can pretty much decide what i want to do for example here in this example we wanted to make a study about the different species of these subalpine bushes matsu inutsui kaeden anakamado kiraboko and sakura in one of the sites in zao mountain so we took this big big big, big image mosaic and we annotated it manually so we could do for example um semantic segmentation to to find what class every pixel belongs to but uh we could also try and do object detection to see where to find where the pixel where the position of each bush of every spe species was and that would use different deep learning networks although the general methodology that i'm going to speak about in a very near um, soon coming video uh, would be in general similar we would use slightly different different uh, deep learning networks for each purpose actually what we did in this case was uh, break down all those images into patches and classify them and we had several examples of each class Inotsu, Ekira, Boko, Matsu, Kaeden, Anakamado and Sakura and we built a deep learning network that classified them that did image classification so every time it received so first it received lots and lots and lots of patches and we trained the network to recognize them we gave it the network the patches and the category of each patch among the six possible categories and then the network uh, was able to receive new images and classify them into these six classes there are many problems that can be solved using deep learning networks and there are many applications where deep learning is already being used to do lots of things we mentioned self-driving cars and face recognitions but there are many more um, as i said before the data in my deep learning network will always be a matrix 
but that matrix can come from very different places. We can use some techniques to transform words into data, into matrices, and then use deep learning networks to predict the next word in a sentence and that will be useful to write in the style of a certain author or as ChatGPT does to give the most plausible answer to a question. Companies use deep learning networks, they use some structured data where there is information about the characteristics of a client and their name, their, I don't know, um, shopping habits, information of different categories that's lumped together, transformed into a matrix, and then they create those deep learning networks to, for example, classify the, that customer into, I don't know, a customer that may commit fraud. That's something that especially banks are very worried about all the time. Or uh, to just uh, who is going to be more susceptible to this particular type of advertisement. So the companies try to collect some data and try to create these, these predictions, okay? In general, I will always need some data to model my deep learning network, to use my deep learning network to solve some particular problem. And we have focus here on semantic segmentation and image classification, but there are many more. We have seen a bit of object detection and there are others. And then use the procedure that we already mentioned to solve the problem. Use some data for training, give the answers along with the data to do that, and then test the whole thing using different data. In subsequent videos, we are going to be going a little bit deeper into this. We are going to be showing code from our very own courses to see how we actually do semantic segmentation and mostly image classification. Okay, if you're interested, you can watch those videos. If you don't know any programming, they are probably going to sound a little bit weird, but you can get at least a general idea and see how relatively short the codes are. I will explain in, I don't know, 10, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, how to do, how to train a deep learning network that classifies images. These images that you're seeing in the slide at this moment in particular. Uh, if you're interested in this, we have many, many notebook, Jupyter notebooks, many, many lessons online with videos such as this one that uh, can tell you how to program and you can start from the very beginning from zero Python up to image processing, mostly drone image processing like the ones that you're seeing now using deep learning.